Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The first of my WWE 2K19 creation suite coverage. 2K were kind enough to invite me to the WWE 2K19 preview event in Covent Garden, where I was able to play the game for a couple of hours and capture some footage. I'm going to be starting off with my thoughts on the improvements made to this year's Create a Superstar mode, but I'll also be covering Create an Arena, Create a Title, and the newly added Create a Money in the Bank. So let's get started with uh, Create a Superstar, and right off the bat, we're greeted with a new features panel. Uh, this panel details some of the new features that are in the mode. So we've got mirrored options, uh, the new randomize button, and the ability to be able to change the angle for the menu screen pose, um, which should add a bit of variety and allow creators to really show off their creations the way they intend to. So as we dive into face creation, uh, we greet with a panel that tells us that all clothing and appearance items are removed with the face and body morphing. Now this happened in previous games, so it doesn't really come as a surprise as such, but it would be a nice feature to be able to keep those items on, especially working with bushier beards and certain hairstyles. Moving on, we can see we've now got full freedom of the camera. This is a really welcome return. Uh, this allows us to rotate completely around our creations. We can zoom in to the smallest details, and most importantly, we can see the top of the head when it comes to things like hair dye. The lighting options return with match lighting, backstage, daylight, black lights and lights off. On the subjects of lighting, I'm really pleased with the flat lighting and the simple backgrounds in the mode. It allows the creator to better see their creation without unusual shadows or the screen effects getting in the way of what they're trying to create. One feature that did catch me by surprise was the big head size option. Now this isn't to be confused with the big head mode, uh, which is obviously also in the game, uh, but this just allows the creation to have a slightly larger head than normal. I'm not 100% sure on where I might use this yet, but it's a nice feature to sort of have a little play around with um, and see what could be done. Uh, the new context menus are on the right hand side of the screen. This was something that I found a bit confusing at first. Um, but I'm sure this will become familiar really quickly. So looking at the teeth selection, this remains uh, the same sadly. I was unable to locate any gum shields or option for that, which is a real shame because we have a lot of uh, wrestlers at the moment that utilise those, including the likes of Pete Dunne. Uh, it's a shame to not have them in the creation suite as well. Uh, into the face details, the, the blemishes remain unchanged. There is a new forehead wrinkle, uh, which acts as a kind of like scar tissue. Uh, it's pretty cool. It'd be really good for making someone like New Jack from ECW. We've got those deep scars in his forehead, and it's definitely a welcome addition to the mode. Face deformation has had a bit of an upgrade in that you can now mirror your changes from one side of the face to the other. It's really useful for when you're trying to create a symmetrical look on your creator wrestler. Uh, particularly when it comes to things like eye height, uh, size, shape, etc. So if you're looking to get that symmetrical look, all you have to do is select the mirror button and it will take all the attributes from the either the left or the right side and it will move them across so that you have a mirrored face. The options within the facial structure settings basically remain the same. I couldn't find any differences here and as do the face templates. So we're stuck with the same face templates from WWE 2K18. Body customization appears to be pretty much the same, uh, along with height and weight options. These also appear to be unchanged from 2K18. Uh, there do appear to be some additional face paints. Uh, notice Finn Balor's full head face paint, as well as a Kabuki style face paint and a Terminator metallic style face paint as well. So moving on to hairstyles, and there's definitely some new hairstyles this year, though probably not as many as you would have liked. I certainly noticed some new hairstyles for some in-game superstars, the likes of Ruby Riot, Asuka, Matt Hardy, Alistair Black, Pete Dunne, and Sonya Deville. I definitely would have liked to have seen a lot more in the way of generic hairstyles thrown into the mix so that we can have a lot more freedom to create superstars who maybe aren't on the game or even for ourselves in my player. One feature that I did find tucked away was if you select a hairstyle such as Pete Dunn's that has a shave design and go into the shave design menu, you can now select a picture to use as your shave design as well. It'll automatically take the elements of the picture and shave them into the superstar's head and you still have all of the flexibility to choose the opacity so you can choose just how strong the design looks. Uh, I think this gives us a lot of freedom and allows us to create some really unique and striking designs. 
So moving on to some of the attire options, there's a whole host of new mask options with updated masks for the likes of Rey, Kalisto, Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik. Uh, there's also some custom masks added in there as well. I certainly saw one to fit LA Park and a mask with hair. Not sure my Luch knowledge is not the greatest. Um, so if you know, let us know in the comments down below. So there are of course a ton of new attire items and to be honest I did skip through those as I was limited to time that I had with the game and I wanted to cover a lot of the other aspects of the creation suite. Um, we can expect to see a lot of the attire parts for a lot of the in-game superstars and certainly I'm sure a few new additions here and there uh, throughout on the generic list as well. One thing I did notice when I was looking through was that the textures on all of the in-game attire items looked super sharp. It might have been the Xbox One X that we were playing on, uh, but everything looked super crisp and it looked like it had a lot more texture compared to last year, so really improved. Another nice uh, addition that I found was that the odd material bug that plagues some of the clothing items from last year, if you think about the tights for the likes of Seth Rollins and AJ Styles, uh, that seems to have been completely fixed with all of the shading looking absolutely perfect and with no ill effects to any custom images that have been placed over the top of them. So the mirror option is a really welcome feature and it allows the creator to design one item such as an elbow pad, complete with logos and then copy them to the opposite arm. Um, speaking from my personal experience, this will save an absolute ton of time, not only in trying to line up logos accurately from one item to the next, uh, but also in scouting through the rows and rows of items for each side and making sure that you're marrying up with the exact same elbow pad or knee pad, for example. So really helpful, really pleased that that's in there. So moving on to the detail section of the Create Superstar mode, and the call names appear to be untouched as do the menu poses although now you definitely have the added ability to alter the camera angle of the menu screen pose. Newly added are the payback abilities. These are quite cool new additions to the gameplay and they allow you to gain a upper hand if you are in a losing situation within a match. So very useful and some of them are very unique and very fun. And rounding off the creative superstar mode, I know one topic that is near and dear to my heart is the deletion utility and the management of logos. Now, unfortunately, I was unable to test whether or not the logo limit is still in place. So we will assume for the time being that there is still a 1000 logo limit. However, the deletion utility has been massively improved. So now when you delete a superstar, you have the option to delete all of the logos that are attached to that superstar, as well as being able to go into the deletion utility itself and delete all of your unused logos with the touch of the Y button or the triangle button, which will get rid of them all in just one click. So no more scrolling through and having to manually delete logo after logo. You are now free to delete a superstar with logos or delete all of your unused logos in just a single click. So a huge step forward uh, for us to be able to manage our logos and our creator wrestlers. So there we have it guys, my initial thoughts on the creator superstar suite for WWE 2K19. All in all, not a massive leap forward for the mode, but there are some really nice features that will certainly make creating more enjoyable this year. The improved lighting and the camera are definitely a big win for me, and the ability to be able to mirror the face morphing and the attire items is gonna be a really good time saver over the course of the year. Um, so I'm super excited to start creating this year, and if you want to join me, I'll be creating everything live on stream at twitch.tv slash defract, so come and join me on there and drop me a follow and we'll be creating everything together from the Photoshop to the in-game stuff uh, right through to release and I'll also be releasing all of the textures to all of the created wrestlers that I make so you can download them if you want to put them on Xbox as I'll be creating on PS4 or if you just want to use them as a base for something that you want to create yourself that's fine by me. Uh, I'll be back with new videos on creating an arena and create a title slash money in the bank over the next few days or so. Uh, so remember to hit the subscribe button to be kept in the loop with all of the WWE 2K19 creation content. And I'll see you guys next time.